I'm Dan Johnson talking to Glenn Bradley, who's going to educate me about maybe not all things Thatcher, but many things Thatcher. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Glenn, uh, first talk to me a little bit about what your relationship with the Thatcher brand is. Okay. Thatcher, uh, David Thatcher uh, was an engineer. Uh, engineer and a uh, mostly mechanic who designed his own airplane and uh, 10 years ago a single place and built built the plane and people wanted it so he sells plans and about seven years ago I decided to build this two-place airplane with him it's the prototype and so it's kind of his retirement dream to build airplanes that are easy to build with minimal tools easy to fly and economical uh, they're very economical to build and to fly. It's, it's the best kept secret, I think, in sport aviation. I've heard a lot of people say good things about them. How many Thatchers of any kind are operating? Well, there's, Approximately. A, there's about 70, I think, single place ones because it's been out a while. Okay. There's about 700 sets of plans out there okay. all over the world. Uh, 70 or so we know are flying. There's probably some flying we don't know about overseas. And then we've got. Uh, three I think of these flying uh, this year we'll probably double that number or even triple that number okay and the way he made it easy to build is all the way through the like the wing all the ribs are identical out to the tip okay three so four feet from the tip oh yeah I they're see all identical right to here is where it breaks then, that's huh? right so and from here back is what we call Hershey bar then. Hershey bar okay but the aileron is trapezoidal and so it gives it a tapered wing aerodynamically which greatly improves the aerodynamics. Oh yeah, yeah. I see the aileron tapers quite a bit. Quite okay. a bit, yeah. And if you don't really look at it, you think it's a tapered wing. And then of course the last four feet tapers not only forward to aft, but it tapers from the bottom up. Oh, okay. So it's double compound, I would call it. Yeah. That. Oh yeah, I see it is. Uh -huh. And and that that's one of the most efficient things about the airplane, along with the strike here. That um, the strike is the part that joins the wing to the fuselage. Right. Uh, those two things, I think, are the things that make it so efficient. It has a glide ratio of 13 to 1. When you fly, you will, nearly everybody, including myself, tended for a long time to come in and just float and float and float because, you know, it just <laughs> keeps going around, huh? <laughs> yeah. And it stalls at about 42, 43. So, what kind of top speed then? Uh, top cruise is about 120. Knots or miles? Miles an hour. Miles an hour, okay. Uh, it's a uh, Revmaster 85 horse engine. It started out as a VW engine 40 years ago, and now it's a highly refined aircraft engine with four electronic ignitions, two oh, okay. built-in alternators, and dual fuel pump, one electric, one mechanical. So it's, it's kind of got double redundancy all the way through it. And uh, it's an awesome engine. It's just incredible. Plus, it's VW-based, so when it come time, comes time to overhaul it, it's, it's very inexpensive to overhaul. Is that right? Okay. I just did a top job on this, a valve job, um, because it had a leak, not because it needed the valve job at 600 hours. And uh, the whole thing, including the uh, shop fee, was under 400 bucks. Is that right? Wow, so, yeah. In the aviation world, that's a terrific bargain on any kind of engine maintenance. Absolutely. I, I fly 220-pound friends in the back in the summer. Is and, that right? And it does fine. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, it's, that's, it's pretty that's impressive. A couple of, of good-sized guys can fly in this. Oh, yeah. And it still performs well. It'll still what perform well. What kind of climb rate did you get with that loading? Uh, about 600 feet a minute in good. the summer. Not bad. Not bad at all. When I flew it solo, uh, when I was test flying it solo uh, with a climb prop, I had 1,300 feet a minute. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, was, that's pretty convincing. I cruise at low cruise, 20 inches manifold pressure. Which translates to what in speed? About 100 miles an hour. 100 miles an hour, okay. But that's that's low. 20 inches is yeah, really right. low. And uh, it does really well, 4.5 gallons an hour. And it'll use auto fuel. Uh, I use Auto gas is okay, all right. I use 70% auto fuel and 30% under low lead. Let's uh, shift gears a little bit from performance and handling now to the build job here. What kind of effort is it to build this airplane, Glenn? Well, it's, it's a planned built airplane, but we do have... A gentleman that builds spars and ribs already oh. pre-drilled, and he will eventually have wings already pre-drilled. So that will really speed up the wing process, building process. The thing that makes it easy is it's built on a flat table, no jigs required, a flat 4x12 table. All the ribs are the same, and um, everything is set up. Dave is insistent on setting everything up 
so that the average guy who's never built a plane before can build it. A lot of times when we were building this, I said, Dave, why don't we do it this way? And he said, well, Glenn, you and I can do it that way, but, but the average guy can't. So we're not going to do it that way. Uh -huh. We're going to do it simple, straightforward. And uh, considering all of that, it's a, it's a pretty sophisticated looking airfoil. I think, and, and the whole airplane is pretty slick. Yeah, you described it as a real simple wing, but I would say that's a, kind of a complex wing, not in the building sense, but in the shape and the uh, uh, the efficiency of the design with the tapered aileron and double tapered uh, leading yeah. edge and trailing edge and a up, slight upward slope. Uh, uh, that's the genius that Dave has. Um, he He kept it simple to build, and yet aerodynamically as you say, it's a sophisticated wing, yeah. and uh, that's where we get such great performance. I took it up to 10,000 feet just to see how it would do, and I have a Zenith carburetor which does not have a mixture adjustable, and I still had 400 feet of minute climb Is that right? at 10,000 wow. feet. Yeah, I have a YouTube on that, ah, I think, pretty, online. Pretty amazing. Okay, so what, uh, so simple, flat table, no jigs, what kind of time investment would it would a first timer have? I'd say twelve yeah, on to average. twelve to fifteen hundred hours okay, probably. Um, now, you, if you built a second one, it would be way faster. Sure. <laughs> but if it's your first airplane, it'll take you a little bit of time. Okay. But there's nothing hard about it. Um, all you need are basic tools that a lot of guys have anyway. There are no sophisticated tools. Just a drill press and a belt sander and a jigsaw and a few things like that. That's it. And a rivet puller. A rivet puller, yeah. <laughs> I see a lot of rivets. So. Yeah, really good rivet puller. There's about 6,000 rivets. 6,000 rivets. So there you go, folks. Buy and, a rivet puller. <laughs> yeah, a pneumatic one. Yeah. And uh, you probably hand. need a, a, a lect, um, an air-powered shear ah, to cut the metal. Yeah, you okay. can do it by hand, though. The only thing we rented on the whole thing was we rented a brake for the uh, bending the metal for the ailerons ah, and the okay. elevator, and we rented from Home Depot for 45 bucks and took it back in two hours we were done. Is so, that right? Yeah. Okay, so that's almost no expense then to almost, add that feature to it. Absolutely. You certainly don't need to buy one. Just go rent one and use it and take it back. But you said that this is an inexpensive thing to, to build. Yeah, I I built this one for 23 grand. Um, Does that, that include the engine? That includes the engine, factory run, and dynode. Making it so, huh? And you can get the landing gears already made. You get it. Uh, the okay. uh, weldment for the controls, you can get that. We have a guy that welds that. And the only other welding on it is an engine mount. We have the same guy that welds that, does super work. All the fiberglass parts, uh, the wing tips and the strake there, um, and the cowl and the wheel pants. We have a guy, Ernest Martin, that makes those. He's, he's a real craftsman, and he makes those as a set. And so you don't have to do any fiberglass work. So you got basically what I would call a partial kit then. Yeah, a lot, kit. a lot of the stuff that maybe people don't want to tackle, like like forming fiberglass. That's yeah. a whole art in itself. Yeah, and Ernest it does great work, and, and you know he he doesn't charge enough to tell you the truth. He just he he loves the airplane. He likes doing it. Huh? Yeah, he owns one. He owns a CX4, and he likes doing it. And. Uh, it's just a great deal. Now, my thing for the plane was not only to test fly it, but to make sure it's ergonomically comfortable. And so when you sit in it, there's plenty of room, and uh, even for a big guy, and your left hand will fall naturally right on the throttle. So you can put your arm over there on the armrest. There's the throttle. The right hand, here's your trim, or you're holding the stick most of the time. And it's just quite comfortable, and the seat's it's back a ways, as you can see, it's not vertical. Uh huh, yeah, I see it's a good got, slope to it. It's got the right 120 degree angle to it, and uh, it's just really comfortable. With a rollover protection bar, I see inside. Yep, rollover bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's let's do CX4 and 5. 4 is the single seater? Single seater. 5 is the two, two seater, like this one. Tandem. Okay. Now, the 7, which I'll be test flying next month, is currently being painted. Okay. Is a side by side version of this. Ah, okay. Same identical wings, same identical tail. You can take the wings off it, put on a seven. Is that right? So, okay. what we have is a lot of guys that don't know which one they want to build. So, they're getting the plans and they're starting on the wings and the tail, and they figure by the time they get that much done, they'll know whether they want a tandem version or a side by side version. And the side by side version. You make that is, decision at the last then, if you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. Um, same engine? Same engine. And the side-by-side -side version is uh, same width as a Cessna 172 and a RV-12. 
So it's roomy inside. Yeah, it's, it's plenty comfortable. Can't beat that. And Revmaster's coming out with, in fact, they're introducing it at this show, a 3,000 engine instead of a 2,300. A 3,000 engine. It's going to be that's, 100 horse. That's a displacement? Those values are for displacement? Displacement. Okay. Instead of 2,300 cc's, 3,000 okay. cc's. And instead of 85 horse, um, or this is actually 80 horse continuous, it'll be 100 horse continuous. Oh, okay. And that's going to be... Yeah, if it does well with 85, as you said earlier, then it's going to go gangbusters with 100, oh, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah, and the climb rate would be awesome, I think. Yeah. Yeah. If you really want to get crazy, put one of these engines in a CX-4. And we've had a couple of guys do that, and they are they perform extremely well. I'll bet. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, a customer says, all right, I, I want to start this, but I'm only going to get these partial kits. What do they start with, the plans? You buy the plans. I have a special one. Study them for a while? Yeah, look them over, make sure you want to do it, and figure out if you have the space, it doesn't take much. We have guys build them in single-car garages. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you the space requirements. That takes care of that. So. Yeah, that's, that's a little tight, but guys do it all the time. And... Uh, you get the plans, figure out, you have the, t most guys have most of the tools. There's nothing that elaborate. Yeah, said it's routine, pr fairly routine tools. Yeah, drill press, and, sander. Uh, uh, and you're buying some parts, the fiberglass and other things that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, you buy the fork and the, the tube there is bent and okay. you buy the landing gear already okay. formed. So so somebody says, okay, well, well, uh, let me get started here. That, you convinced me. What what would it take them by the time they said, I'll order the plans. Let's let's assume I get the plans right away. What about all the parts? How quick can you get those to them? Well, you can get the plans. I'll hand them to you, or he'll send them to you in about a week. Okay. Um, he probably has spars already ready made. Oh, really? Okay. And uh, Ernest, I think, has a couple of sets of the fiberglass made. And if he doesn't, he'll go down in the basement and make them. You know, he's he's at. He's retired. He has that kind of time, so there won't be delay on parts because that's important to us. Sure, and, uh, sure. And of course, you can always call me or you can call Dave, and and I can answer the flying questions and some of the building questions. He can answer all the building questions, and builders call him all the time. He loves it. He loves hearing. He just likes the idea that he's given guys happiness regarded avia regarding aviation. You know, it's Good it's affordable and it's it's a safe, easy to fly airplane. It just makes him so happy that he does that. You know, he Very just, cool. Uh, that's really his mission in life. Well, how do we find out more information or maybe start that purchasing process, Glenn? Uh, where would we send him on the web to learn more, make contact, things like I'd that? I'd say go to ThatcherCX4.com, um, and that'll have a lot of links showing you where to get plans, where to get some of the pre-built parts, Okay. Uh, how to contact Dave or how to contact me. You can call me anytime. Um, I'm all over the web with uh, uh, videos. You do YouTube, a lot of YouTube videos, you said. A lot of YouTube okay. videos. Uh, keep guys motivated that are building them, you know. Excellent. I, I show them do all kinds of stuff. Uh, stalls and turns and landings and short field landings. And okay, and how do we find you on, on YouTube? By just, your go, name? just go to YouTube and, and um, in, on YouTube type in Thatcher Aircraft and you'll get it. But you put Thatcher Aircraft CX-5 and you'll get all my YouTubes. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, I don't have much about the Thatcher uh, until now. I'm going to have some more, but uh, lots of other affordable aviation of all kinds. Find that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Glenn and I here at Sun and Fun. Thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate it.